Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to build a food tracker app in Flask. So I've had this template sitting around for a few years. It was created in 2017 and I never did anything with it. And it's just for a food tracker app. So you can have a list of days, you can add a new day with the food. Here you have a form where you can add the food and the uh, protein, the carbs and the fat content of that food. And then you can see the details of a particular day and get the total amounts here. So the way this video is going to work is it's going to be like a live video, even though it's recorded. So I'm going to go and write the code. And if I make any mistakes, they're going to be in the video. I won't edit them out because it's like I'm doing it myself. So you can see the entire process. And I've created an app like this before, but it's been a few years. So I probably forgot everything that I did. So it's like I'll be starting this from scratch. And I know there is something that can be modified to make this app better. Uh, I think if I look here, basically the problem is there is no quantity. So you can only eat one food per day unless you just add the same thing over and over again. So that's going to be left to you as the viewer as an exercise. I'll, I'll leave the code in the description below so you can get it. I'll leave the starting files and the files that I have when I finish so you can modify them if you choose to do so. So let's get into this. I have these three templates here. I'll go over to VS Code and start. So the first thing I want to do is I want to create a virtual environment. So uh, let's see, Python dash M V and V V E N V. And then the name will be E N V is the virtual environment. And I have the code files here. So it's bootstrap. I have three HTML templates. I have a CSS file, I have one image and I have some bootstrap stuff. I might use the CDN for bootstrap instead of those files. We'll see in a moment here. And I'll start up the uh, virtual environment. Okay, so I want to first install Flask. So pip install Flask. And I'll also install um, Flask SQL Alchemy and Flask, sorry, not another Flask library other than SQL Alchemy. So pip install Flask SQL Alchemy. So I'll install that. And then I'll also install python.env. So once this is done, I'll install that. So pip install python.env. And I'll use this for a little bit of my configuration. Maybe I haven't decided yet, but uh, now I want to create a directory that's going to have my app. So uh, I'll make a directory. We'll call this food tracker. It's the same name as the directory that I'm in right now. And I'll also create a dot env file. So yeah, I'll need this and a dot flask env. So I believe in dot flask env, I need to put the name of the flask app. So if I do flask run, we see it could not locate the app. So it should be flask app equals food tracker here. And then I can run it again and it picks up food tracker, but now it doesn't pick up the actual app object. And before I leave this file, let me switch the environment to development because I want the debug mode to be on. So I'll go into food tracker. I'll create a file called dunder And then in here, I'll create the create app function. So from flask import flask and then create app. And I don't think I'll have any special configuration for this. It's going to be pretty simple. So I might just put all the configuration here and not use the .env file, but we'll see. Uh, I'll return app. And of course I need to actually create it. So I'll create it above. So app flask dunder name and just as a test uh, i'll create a route and i'll just return tests and if this works i know everything is working correctly so now flask run again it's in debug mode and i can open up this link and i see test up here in the upper left hand corner so i know everything is working so the first thing i can do is i can get these templates to appear as the result of going to a route. So I'll get rid of this and I'll create a blueprint. So let's see in here, I wanna create a blueprint called, um, we'll just call this main. So I'll make a directory called main and then inside of main, I'll um, create dunder init. So it can be treated as a package. And I'll also create a file called uh, route stop high. And this is where I'll actually put my 
routes. So I don't think I need to use the dunder init for anything. So from Flask, import uh, blueprints. And then we'll call this main as the name of the blueprint. And we'll take blueprint. I believe the name of the blueprint is first, followed by the module, so dunder name. And then I can create a route. So here, I'll test the blueprint again, just to, or I'll test a route again to make sure I can see it. So uh, blueprint test, and then I'll go to the dunder init in my project and I'll import that. So from dot main import, well, how about this main dot routes import main. And then in here, I want app dot register blueprints and then main. So let's see if this works. So flask run. I'll go back, refresh, and we see blueprint test. So everything is working so far. So now the three routes that I want is I want one for the index. So the index is here where you can see uh, some of the existing records. I also want the add, so something like slash add, and then finally slash view. So those are going to be the three that I'll create. So I'll go to routes and I'll create them here. So main routes add. And I'll return something momentarily. Main route uh, view. And I'm going to return a template. So render template. And I need to move the templates that I have into some kind of template directory. So what I'll do is I'll create a template directory here. So it's gonna be on it's going to be on the same level as main. So templates. And then inside of it, I can move these in there. So uh, add index and view. And I already know I'll need a static directory as well. So I'll create that. So static. And then I'll move the uh, CSS file into there and also the image. And it won't let me move the directory. So I'll just create one in here, call this IMG. And then I'll move the file. It's not a directory, that's a file. Okay, so in here, I'll create a directory called IMG, and then I'll move the background image in there. Okay, so now I want to return the templates that I have so I can see them. So instead of blueprint tests, I want return render template and then index.html. And then for these two, I'll do something similar. So I have one for add, and I have one for view. Okay, so let's see if they appear. They should be ugly if they do appear. So we have the, the index one here. If I go to slash add, we have the add one, and then we also have the view, okay? So I'll close these out. So we can just see the app now. And I'll work on fixing each one of these. So let me open up uh, index. And thinking about it, I could extract some of this out into a base template, but since I only have three and I won't extend it, I'll just modify things as they are in here. So I'm gonna go through this and look for places where I need to update something. So for example, we have this uh, bootstrap CSS united.min.css. So I'm going to need that. and United.css is something that I'm not familiar with. So I'm thinking it could be specific to this or is it? So let's see. Is it like a theme? So bootstrap United. And this is a theme. So you know what, just to keep things easy, I'll just use the files that I already have. So I don't have to figure out exactly what I need to get from a CDN. So I'll go back here and I'll move everything into the same directory. So I probably won't be able to move bootstrap into static. Yeah. So let me try this. Um, I will move BS to a food tracker static and use sudo. And the permission isn't set, so let's see. The permissions on Bootstrap. 
Oh, it looks like I have the permissions. So I moved this file from Windows to Linux. So I think that's why I'm having issues. So I'll just create a new directory in here and I'll move the files over one by one. So inside of static, we have BS. And then inside of BS, we have CSS, fonts, and JS. So CSS, uh, fonts, and JS. And I'll just move those files over. So uh, CSS files go into the CSS directory. And of course, I'll do the same thing for the fonts and the JavaScript. And I shouldn't have as much JavaScript. And really, I don't know why I have any JavaScript at all for this, but I'm not gonna look too closely at that code. I don't wanna waste time. I wanna focus on the Flask part. So these are fonts. Some glyph icons, okay, that makes sense. And then for JS, we have four files. Don't know why npm is in there, but I'll move it anyway. Okay, so I have all the files moved over. So now, one by one, I'm going to switch these over to use the static. So what I mean by that is static, or not like that, I'm not using Django, is URL4, and then static, and then the file name. Right, so, and it should be double curly brackets. Okay, so BS CSS United dot min. So I'll put that in there and we'll test it. So flask run. And then if this changes at all, we know it's working. Okay, so yeah, it changed. And now I can just do the same thing to the other ones. So I'll copy everything from this point. Actually, I'll just copy the whole thing and I'll update them as I go. So for this, it's just going to be styles.css, right? Yeah. So this is in the bootstrap directory. So styles.css and then let's see. Any more hrefs view, view, we'll come back to those. Those links won't work, but I'm just looking for any possible CSS. And then for JavaScript, it's going to be the same thing. So let me go back up here and copy this. Okay, so here, and it's gonna use jQuery.min, and this comes from the bootstrap directory. So I can copy this, put it in here, And then this goes here. All right. So I think everything is working on the index. So let's go and look at the index. And now it looks like the page I showed you before because all the external files are loaded. And another thing I can do when I test it is I can open up the developer tools and look at the network tab refresh and make sure I don't get any 404s. So the only 404 I get is the fav icon and that's because I don't have one. So that's completely fine. But all the other files are loading correctly. So now I'll go back to the editor and I'll work on the other ones. So add is next. So let me copy this and I'll just go through the same process again. Let's see, united.min.css. Really, I could have just copied and pasted the entire thing. So that's exactly what I'll do. And I'll update this. And they should all have the same. Yeah, that would be easiest. So let me open up view and then update this. And then I'll copy the JavaScript stuff at the bottom and copy that over and copy it over here. Okay. So now let me check to see if the other pages are working. So we'll go to slash add and this appears to be working and I'll open up the developer tools and refresh. No 404s except for fav icon. 
and this should be view instead of views. And likewise, just the 404 on the fav icon, everything else loads. So all this stuff is working. Now let me fix the links. Cause if I click on this, for instance, it won't work because it's trying to go to the actual template instead of the view. So in here, I'll look for any instances of href and I'll update them with the appropriate URL for. So here, like the index, this should be a URL for index. Just like that. And then home is going to be exactly the same. And then we have add. So this should be URL for add. And then view is another one. This will depend on the actual date that you're looking at, but I can just put this here temporarily. And I think I need to do it multiple times. So yeah, I'll copy this one because each date is going to be slightly different. So December 14th, it looks like the placeholders are all the same date. And this should be the only page where I have to do it for each one like this. Okay, so looking at all the links that I have, they should be updated here. If I go to add, I'll do the same thing. I'll search for href. This should be index and index here. This will be add. And then this, oh, so I'll have some kind of edit page and a delete page, but I'll leave these to do nothing right now until I implement that. So I'll have more routes in the future, but for now, I'll just I'll leave those as they are. And then in views, the final page, let's see, one for the index, another one for the index, one for add, and yeah. So I just realized something. These need the blueprint, so this should be main.index, uh, main.index, and then main.add, and then it should be the same for the other ones. So let me adjust these. So main.index, main.index, and main.add, and that should be it for this particular page except for like the edit and delete buttons. And then here I'll search for URL four and then just put main.view there. Main.view there. Main.view. And those are static, those are fine. They don't have a blueprint associated with them. Uh, main.index, another main.index and main.add, I believe that's it. Now there's another view here, so main.view. Okay, that's it. So now I can go back to the app and refresh everything. No errors, if I click home, it takes me home. If I click add food item, it takes me to the add food item page. Uh, the submit button doesn't do anything yet, of course. These delete and edit buttons don't do anything. If I go to home and click on view for one, it takes me to the view page and it should take me to the view page for all of them. All right, so I have the visual stuff working. So I have all the templates loaded. I have all the static files associated with those templates working. So now I want to work on some of the logic. And I suppose the first thing I can do is I can think of a data model. So I'm going to use Class SQL Alchemy. So I'll instantiate that and get that set up here. So in my food tracker directory, I'll create a file called extensions. And I clicked enter too quickly. All right, so delete this one. And uh, extensions.py. And the reason why I instantiate extensions in this file is because I don't have to import anything from Dunder init. I like to only import things inside of Dundernet. I don't want to import from Dundernet anywhere else. And if I'm going to import anything from Dundernet, it's going to be only create app. And that's because I'm using uh, this create app to actually run the app. 
when you're using the Flask command line tool, it costs create app automatically, so you don't have to import it anywhere. But if you're using some kind of other server like G Unicorn, for instance, then you would need to import create app before you can actually run the app. But I'm not doing that here. So I have this extensions file uh, from Flask SQL Alchemy, import SQL Alchemy, and then I can instantiate the uh, DB object here with no app associated with it. So from here, inside of extensions, what I can do, or from extensions, I can import uh, this DB object into Dunder init to register it on the app, which I'll do in just a second. And I can also import uh, the DB object into a file called models, which I'll create momentarily to crack, to actually create the models. So in here, uh, we'll say from dot extensions, import DB, and then here I can do a DB init app and then pass in the app object. And I'll also add some configuration for the database. So I'll say uh, SQL Alchemy database URI equals, and it's just going to be a SQLite database. So three slashes db.sqlite3. So it creates it in the same directory. And then I'll also turn off the track modifications. So SQL Alchemy uh, track modifications. We'll set that to false. Okay, so now I can create a file called models. So models.py. And in here, I can say from dot extensions, import db. And I can use that db to create the models. So class, and then I need to figure out what I actually need to create. So I'll go back to the app. And let's look at this. So Adding a food item, that's the easiest thing to determine because we see all the uh, fields here and these are going to be inserted directly into some table. So basically we have some kind of food model and it's going to have a name associated with it, a protein count, a carbohydrates count, and a fat count. And I believe that's it. I don't think I need anything else. So I'll create that first. So we'll call this food. We'll do db.model. And then I need an ID column. So DB uh, column, DB integer. And then this is going to be the primary key column. And then I need a name for the food. So DB string. And this will be, let's say, up to 50 characters long. Uh, we can say unique is true for this. For the next one, we need uh, the protein count. So we'll just say proteins, uh, DB a column db integer and then it can definitely be not unique but we can say nullable is false so it has to be there and i can also say nullable is false for the name as well and then uh carbs can do db column db integer is really the same thing as above and then fats so same thing as above, and then nullable is false. Okay, so I think that's enough for the food model. I might have to add a relationship here eventually, but this is the, uh, the basic structure of the food model. Now let's go back and look at something else. So I have dates, and you know each date has a list of foods associated with it, so that suggests some kind of relationship between the date and the, the foods. And of course, the foods themselves already have the, the macronutrients there. So the protein, carbs, and fat. The calories aren't stored. That can be calculated from just knowing that proteins and carbs are um, for each, for every four, wait, I can't remember. For every one protein, that's four carbs. And for every one fat, it's nine carbs, or excuse me, nine calories. So for every one protein or carbohydrate, you get four calories and for every fat you get nine calories all right so that would be calculated so i don't need to add anything for the calculation i just need to make sure i have some kind of model for the date so how can we do that we can call this something like log date so log date uh, db model is we're going to have the id column again the primary key is true and then we're going to have a date. So we'll call this date, db column, uh, db date, and then nullable is 
false. And I can also have some kind of relationship between the two. So looking at this, let's see, have the date and really the date just has food associated with it, right? So for each date, we're going to have food items and you can have as many food items as you wish. And then each food item can be associated with as many dates as you want. So that suggests a many to many relationship. So let's go here and create that many to many relationship. So the relationship is going to be between food and log date. So I'll create up here. So db.table and then what we want to do is create uh, the ID column. So DB column, DB integer, and then the primary key is going to be true. And I forgot how to do this. So let me look up the documentation. Let's see, flash seek alchemy. And we'll go to mini to mini. Okay, so yeah, I don't need the ID column because I'm not creating um, a model. Instead, I'm just creating a table. So I can use the two columns as a compound composite primary key. So first thing I need is the name. So I'll call this uh, log food. And you know what? I'll just change this to be log to make that easier. So food and log. So log food. And it won't have an ID. It's going to have a um, log ID along with a food ID. So DB column, DB integer, and then primary key is true, right? But these are also foreign keys. So I can say DB foreign key, and then this is foreign key to uh, log.id. And let me just add the comma here. And then I can do the same thing. And this will be the food table, right? So let's take a look. I believe everything is correct there. Yeah, so integer, I can give it a name. So this is log ID, and then this is going to be food ID. And notice that I don't have a quantity for this. So like I said before, this is one of the limitations of this particular app. You can only add one food at a time. Instead of saying you ate like two burgers, you can add a burger twice. Well, actually, no, you can't add a burger twice because of this relationship. So a quantity would be nice. But in this particular case, I'm not going to have a quantity. I'm going to leave that to you. So when I do this, I'm only going to add one food per day. And if you want to change it, you can go ahead. And really, the key is you add a quantity column here, and you just make sure it gets updated every time you uh, add the information into the database. So I have that. I have the log food. I have the food table, and I have the log table. So do I need any other uh, relationships or tables? So I can add the date here. I can view and I can add the food item. So I don't think I need anything else. So we can go ahead and create this. And of course, if I messed up on anything, I can uh, redo it. And actually before I create this, I'll create the uh, relationship between the two. So for each log, I'll have the relationship on here. So we'll say like foods and db.relationship. Um, and then I always forget the order for this. So let's go back to the documentation or Flash SQL Alchemy. And they'll show us an example here, I believe. So many to many relationships. Yeah, so the relationship, we can call it um, something. So I'll call it food. And we have to pass in a secondary table, which is the association table that I have. And then we can pass in the lazy and the back reference. So uh, for this relationship, I'll call this foods, right? So log.foods will give us all the food for that particular day. And then we'll need to have the secondary. So the secondary for this will be um, db.table. And I need to give this uh, a variable. So we'll call this log food. And the reason why I put this up here is because I need it available when I use it down here. And this should be the name of the table. So this should be food, not just foods, right? So I have foods here. And we have a lazy. Uh, I'll just leave the lazies off in the back reference. I don't believe 
I need them. And if I do, I can just add them because any part here, this part is defined inside of the RM. So once I create the table, this has nothing to do with the actual table structure. This is just so we can view the code easily um, when we're writing it or access it somewhere in the code, but it's not an actual database thing. So uh, what I'll do is I will create this. So let's see, dunder init, I want to import create app and I want to import uh, DB. So I'll start up the Python REPL and say from food tracker, uh, import create app. And then also from food tracker dot extensions, import DB. All right. So now I want to do DB dot create all and I can pass in the app and that's just going to be create app. And now I see in my file viewer, I have db.sqli3. So if I open that up, and this should be food tracker db.sqli3, look at the tables, and we see the tables aren't there. So this is a weird thing in Flash SQL Alchemy when you're doing db.create all. You have to import the tables first. So I'll just do that again. So from a food tracker dot models imports. Uh, log date, food, and what's the last one? Log. And is it log date? It should be log food. Yeah, not log. Log date. So log food. And invalid syntax. So log ID. Let's see. What did I mess up here? I forgot a comma here. Okay. Table takes at least two arguments. Um, let's see. Line, line four. Takes at least, oh, this should not be log ID equals. So I'm thinking in terms of the model down here, like these are class attributes. I can't do that. I just do db.column. And we'll see if we go back to the documentation, it's the same thing. So that makes sense. So let's try that again. Okay, so everything works. Then I'll do the um, from food tracker dot extensions import db. Then from food tracker itself import uh, create app. And then I can do db uh, create all and then app equals create app. And then exit out of here, open up the SQLite database and it's not in this directory. Uh, SQLite three. Food tracker, DB SQL like three tables, and we see the three tables that we want. So we see the food table, we see the log table, and we see the log food table. So those are the three tables that I want. And now I can start working on populating those tables with stuff. So let's start with the, let's go to the, uh, the app. And I think the food stuff is the best. So let me start up the server again. So I think here's a good starting point. So, you know, I want to say, you know, burger and then 20 protein, 25 carbs and 15 fat, and then submit this. So let's go and do that. So let's start with the add template. And first I'll make sure that all the form stuff is working correctly. So let's see, uh, it will show the existing food items. I'll get to that. So we have a form here. Action is the same endpoint. So I'll just make it more explicit. I will say URL four, and then here the uh, route will be add. And I need to make sure add can take in both get and post requests. So URL for add, and I'll go ahead and do that now. So what I'll do is I'll create a separate one. I'll do add get. And then I'll have uh, add posts. So add uh, methods posts and then add posts, right? So this is going to return something and we'll get to that soon. But um, this will be add method posts. And then let's see, do these have names on them? So I have food dash name, I have protein. I have carbohydrates and I should have fat for one. So the names are that and I have the submit button. So let's see if I can submit the form. 
and we see oh so main dot add i need to fix the other ones now so add here and you know what just so i don't have to do that i'll change this back to add and then this will be add underscore post okay so here if i click submit i get a blank page so we know that's working now what i want to do is i want to make sure i can get the values out of here so I'll go over to the route for posts and I'll just get those values. So we have food name as one. We're going to have the protein. We're going to have the carbs and we're going to have the fats, right? And to do that, I need the request object. So request.form.get and then this should be fat. And then if I update these, these should be similar. So this should be carbohydrates. This should be protein. And I don't know if it has an S on carbohydrates. It looks like it does. Okay, so there's an S. And then the food name is going to be food dash name. So food dash name. And then what I want to do is I just want to return those. So I'll just return them in order with a space in between. So uh, food underscore name, uh, proteins, carbs, and fats. Okay, so if this works, I'll be able to see the four things that I put into the form. So let's try. So food name, uh, tests, well, I'll just, we'll just use burger. So burger 20, 25, and 15 for the fat, hit submit. And I don't get it because I'm using ginger syntax instead of F string syntax. <laughs> so let me remove a curly bracket here and I can put the F here. Now that makes it an F string. And now when I try this again, so burger 20, 25, and then 15, submit. Okay, so 20, 25, 15, and we see burgers. So everything is working there. So what we wanna do is we wanna take this burger and the information associated with it and add it to the database. So I need to import from that model. So we'll say from, from um, dot, let's see, dot models, we're going to import um, food. That's what I wanna do with that capital F. Then here, I can say uh, new food equals food. And then we have the name, we have the uh, proteins, we have the carbs and the fats, right? So I'll just put these on their own line. So food name and then uh, make it look like this. So proteins equals proteins. Carbs equals carbs and fats equals fats. Just like that. And then I can take the DB object, which I need to import momentarily. So DB session add a uh, new food and then db.session commit. Right? So looking at this, I think I have everything necessary. So let's go to the page and see what happens. So while importing from a food tracker, it can't import models. So that's because of the directory that I'm in. So I'm in the main blueprint. So I need to go up to the actual project. So food tracker dot models. And now if I refresh this, it should work. Okay, and I need to import that DB object. I didn't do that. So from food tracker dot extensions import DB. And now let's try this. So burger. And I won't use burger because uh, I already have that here. So we'll say pizza. So pizza will give it um, 35 proteins. We'll give it 70 carbs and we'll give it 20 fat. So submit pizza 35 70 20 so that works 
And because the database code was in between, it should have added it to the database. So I can confirm that pretty quickly by opening up the database, db.sqlite3, and then select star from food. And I see in there I have pizza as the first row, 35, 70, and 20. So that's exactly what I want. So now if I go to the template and I look at this, in the, in the template, I have a list of the foods that already exist. So here I have the burger along with the pencil for edit and then the delete button. So what I can do is I can loop over all the foods in the database and I can display them here. So uh, in here, what I'll do, and before I do that, let me redirect this to the, the regular ad first. So I need a redirect and URL for. So after you create a new food, it's going to just redirect you back to the same page, but using a, a Git request instead of a post request. So we'll say return redirect uh, URL for main dot add, and it will just redirect the user here. And now I want to get a list of foods. So I can say foods equals food dot query dot all. And I'm not concerned about the order. And I can just pass these foods to the template. And then inside the template, I can loop over the foods. So it's going to be repeating uh, table rows here. So for food and foods, and I'll put it down here as the in for because I only need to put one row in the tags. And let me go ahead and delete the other one because I won't need it. And I can leave this uh, edit and delete the same. But what I want to do is I want to specify the, um, the row number first. So that's going to be food.id and then the name will be uh, food.name. And then I believe this is protein, carbs, and fat. So uh, we'll do proteins. And then we'll do uh, carbs for this. So carbs and then fats. And I need to calculate the calories, and I'll do that momentarily. But we can test this out. So fats. Now, if I start up the server again and go back to the ad page, I should see pizza there if it works. And I couldn't build the URL for ad. This is online. Let's see, where is it? Um, line 57 in the template. So line 57 in the template. Um, line 57. Here we go. So this should be main.add. I don't know why that worked before, but it doesn't work anymore. But let's refresh. Okay, so I see pizza down here. I see pizza, 35, 70, 20, and the calories are wrong, I'm pretty sure. But all the other ones are working. So let's try adding the burger again. So burger, 20, 25, 15, submit. It should reload the same page, and when it reloads, it can add in the new item. So we see burger down here for 20, 25, and 15. So now let's do the calculation for the calories. So what I can do is I can modify the model to have a property that will get me the calories for the particular food. So I can say property and then define a method with a property that I want. So calories and it should take in self. And then let's just test this. So return self, oh, let's say return 10,000, right? So when I use this property, it should return 10,000. So if I go back to the template and go to the part where it lists the foods, instead of 315, I can have food.calories. And then let's see, refresh. Okay, so now we see 10,000 for calories because I added that property. So now I'll do the real calculation. So I'll go back to models. And the real calculation is going to be, um, these are all integers, so I should be able to do self.proteins uh, times four plus self.carbs times four plus self.fats times nine, right? So let's refresh this. Okay, so for the pizza, I get 600, and for the burger, I get 315 again, so that works. So. You know, 35 times 4 is 140. Um, 70 times 4 
is 280. So 140 plus 280 is 420. And then for the fat, uh, 20 times 9 is 180. So 420 plus 180 is 600. So all that is working correctly. So I believe everything on this page is fine. And I have the option to edit and delete. So let me work on that now. So let's go over to the routes. Now create a new route called uh, delete food. I'll do that first. So uh, main.route, and then we'll do um, delete food. And this will take in some kind of ID. So we'll have um, an integer that is the food ID. Create the function, delete food needs to take in that food ID as a parameter. And then uh, what I can do is I can query for that food and delete it. So um, what is the query? So food equals food dot query get uh, ID is going to be the food ID. And then I can do db dot session dot remove that food and then I can commit and then I can redirect back to the ad page. So redirect URL for main.add. So that should be pretty simple. And then if I go back to the template, and I don't know why I just closed that, but I'll go to the template. And here I'll edit the link. So this will be URL for, and then delete food. And this should have main on the front. And it's gonna take in the food ID. So food ID is gonna be equal to uh, the food.id just like that. And let's see if this works now. Refresh the page. And if I hover over delete, it's not working. Hover over delete. Oh, this is pointing to add. So I put it on the wrong one. I put it on um, edit instead of delete. So I'll put that back and I'll just copy this over to delete and refresh the page. So now if I hover over, I see delete food slash one at the bottom, delete food slash two, and I'll click that. And I get an error. So maybe get can't take ID. Maybe I'm thinking of Django instead of Flask. So let me open up routes again and just leave this as the food ID, just like that. So let's go back and try that again. I'll refresh just to be safe. I'll click delete for the burger and it gives me a type error. So remove takes one positional argument, but two were given. So let's see. Um, db.session.remove, it's telling me it's taking in two things. Um, so how about this? How about just food.delete? I believe that is another way of deleting in SQL Alchemy. So these little things, I do get confused. Um, when doing this because I use different languages. So little things like deleting, I completely forget how to do. So let me just look at the the uh, the documentation and it's delete, it's not, it's not remove. So let me just change this to delete instead of remove. And then we'll try this again. So delete the burger. It refreshes the page and we see the burger is gone. So now if I add the burger back, 20, 25, and 15, it's added back, it should have an ID, uh, has an ID of uh, two. So let me delete this, refresh. Yeah, so um, gives me this error saying that the unique constraint failed because I tried to add a burger twice. And we see I have this blank food item for some reason. So let me see. If I go here, I can get the food for delete food. So it takes the ID, it gets the food and it commits. So that should be fine. So let me try delete. And now let me refresh the page a couple of times and that works. And then let me add the burger again, 20, 25, 15, submit that. The burger is back and the ID is two again. So let's delete that. Okay, so I think it's fine. Uh, I think the first error was because of when I had remove instead of delete and some things weren't working properly, but everything looks okay now. So 20 
Okay, this should be 20, 25, and 15. Okay, so now I can do the same thing for edit. So for the edit, I just wanna have the food item uh, load it in here first. So when I click on this, it reloads the page and it will have the food name, the protein, the carbs, and the fat content, and I can submit it. So what I'll do is I'll have one for main routes. And we'll say edit food. So slash edit food. And this is gonna have a food ID as well. And then Let's see, we can say uh, edit food, pass in the food ID. This is gonna return a template. Well, actually, no. So what would be the best way to approach this? I think if I put the ID on the, the uh, ad page, and if the ID exists, then um, I can, put the food information in there. And then this route can be for actually updating the database. So let's try that. So I'll copy this. And on add, I'll say uh, food ID equals that. And then for defaults, I'll say food ID is equal to none. So food ID, none. And then I can say food ID. Well, I mean, it's it's both add and edit. Let me think. You know what? I'll I'll go back to what I was doing before. So, I'll make this just add. Yeah, I just want this to be for edit only. So I'll return the template for edit. So return, I'll render template, and then the template will still be add, but the the route will be edit. And let's see. What I want to do is I want to get the food item. So food equals food query get food ID, right? And I can pass that food to the template. So food equals food. And inside of the template, I can have it uh, inside of the form. So where's my form? Up here. And then I can have a value for this. So for example, if I make the value of this a food.name, it should appear. So let's try this and make sure I didn't break the app page. So add, add doesn't work because of the changes I made. So line 49 and routes, the indentation is off. So let's try that. And it's just this new, this new one that I created, it messed up the indentation. So let's let's just try this. Okay, so food is undefined in Jinja. And uh, what I can do is I can either pass empty food to the add template, and that would be easiest. So food equals none, about that. But then it will, it might fail when I try to access the actual attribute. So let's see. So it doesn't. So Ginger takes care of that for me. So if I go to uh, edit food slash one, I get pizza. Okay. And I have to pass the list of foods into the, uh, the template, just like I have an ad. So I'll do that here. So foods is that. And then foods equals foods. And if I go over to the template, I can add in the rest of the values. So value food.name. And I can do the same thing here. So proteins, carbs, and then fats here. Okay, so if I go back, Add still works. And if I go to edit food slash one, I see pizza 35, 70, and 20. Okay, so all that's working. So now I want to make sure when I hit submit that it submits the values correctly. And one thing I can do is I can add a hidden field for the ID. So what I'll do is I'll say um, 
uh, at a hidden field somewhere right before the submit button. So input type hidden, and I can call this name food underscore ID. I use dash to be consistent with the food name. The value for this is going to be a food dot ID, right? And inside of the routes, what I can do is I can get that food ID and add. So, um, you know, looking at this, it's back to the whole add versus edit thing. Um, so now I'm thinking I should have this all on add instead of edit. I mean, I can still have this edit food route here, but it will post to add. So, you know, I'll, I'll do that. So it's going to post to add. So uh, food ID is going to be a request form get and food ID. And this will be food dash ID. And then I can say, you know, if, if food ID, we can edit it. So food equals food dot query gets food ID because I want to get the existing one and I can update the values for that. So food dot name, food dot proteins, food dot carbs and food dot fats, right? And then else it will create a new food for me. Okay, so this will be uh, proteins, food name, carbs, and fats. And then it will add the new food in this block here, but it will commit outside the block, right? So everything looks okay here. And it will redirect to the same route here. So we should see the updated values. So let me go ahead and add that edit food route uh, for the uh, the actual link. So I'll go to add here. Let me close that file. So I have the delete one. So I'll just copy this and I'll do uh, edit food. Takes in the food ID, right? So let's try this again. So we'll, we'll go to slash add and then I'll click on edit for pizza. It takes me to the pizza edit. Edit for burger takes me to burger edit. So I'll increase the fat for the burger from 15 to 20. Hit submit. And now I see it updated at the bottom. Uh, I have 20 is the fat and the calories have increased from 315 to 360. And it takes me to the blank page again. So that's exactly what I want. And we already know the delete button is working. So everything looks good. For the pizza, I'll increase the protein to 40. It submits and it adds uh, 20 more calories to the pizza along with updating the protein to 40. So it looks like everything is working here for the food. So before I move on to the other ones, let me just add some more food. I have no idea what the actual uh, macronutrient values would be for these foods, but I'll just add them anyway. So ice cream, ice cream will say 10, um, 10 and we'll make it really fatty. So 30 for the fat. Um, another thing we can eat is, uh, let's say chicken or a chicken sandwich. So this one, let's say 50 protein, uh, 30 carbs and 15 fat. We'll add that. And how about a couple of more? So another food that I can add is, um, I don't know, pancakes. <laughs> Pancakes will say five protein, 20 carbs, and 15 fat. And for one final food, I will add steak. So steak protein will be 70, carbs will be uh, five, and fat will be 70 as well. Okay, so I have six things in my database for the foods. And when I go to actually add these to a particular log date, uh, I'll be able to select these foods. So I'll go home and we see that the way this is that this works is I can create a date first and then I can view the record and then I can add foods from this drop down. So what I'll do is I'll work on this page next. So I'll go to the view template and let's see uh, view.html 
and here. So I want to I want to make sure this drop down is working correctly. So these are hard coded values. I want to update this so I can get the actual values from the database. So I'll go to routes and I'll go to view and I'll just get all the foods. So foods equals uh, food query all. And then I'll pass that to the template. So foods equals foods. Inside of that, I can close out add. Inside of this, I'll create a for loop. So I'll be looping over those foods. So for food and foods. And then I only need to loop over one option, not all of them. And this formatting is a bit weird. And I can't hit the right button. Okay, so in four. And then the rest of these can go away. So now when I do this, it should have burger six times and it does. So now let me update this to be the actual food name. So food dot name, and then the value is going to be the food ID. So food dot ID and okay. So we see pizza, burger, ice cream. So these are the things that we have and the ID should be working there. So basically what I want to do is like when I click the add food button, it will just update this list down here. But before I can do this, I need to go back one and make sure I can create new uh, log records in the database. So each one of these will have a date and then these will be calculated um, and I'll, I'll do the calculation at the end, but I need to be able to create a date first. So here I'll create a post route for this and make sure I can get the date in the right format. So for routes, I'll go to the index and I'll, I'll have one for uh, the, we'll call this create, create log. How about that? And this will be for post methods only. So post, and we'll call this create log. And I know at the end, I want to redirect to the log page with that particular date. So I'll just, I'll hold off on that for now. Well, here's what I'll do. I'll put just views here and then I'll add the actual date ID later. So first thing I wanna do is I wanna get the, the date that was submitted. So request.form.get and I need to see what the, what the name of it is. So I'll open up the index template and we're gonna have the form for adding the date. So that should be up here somewhere. Yeah. So the action, this is going to be uh, URL for main dot create log. And let's see, add new date, submit button. So here's the input class placeholder. There's no name. So we'll just call this uh, date. All right, so if we go back to routes, I can get the date here and date just like that. So date equals request.form get date. And I just want to uh, print this out so I can see what format this is going to return for me. So I'll select, I'll select a date. So July 16th, add date, could not build uh, endpoint for views. So let's see, this should be main dot views, but the print statement should have worked somewhere if I just go up. Okay. So 2020, uh, 07, 16, I want to convert that to a date. So, um, we'll say from date time import date, I believe. And let me see, let me test this. So from date time, import date and then um, date string parse time, right? It's something like that. And I can have like, um, you know, 05, 02, 2020, and I can pass in the format. So that's going to be um, these, I believe. Okay, so yeah, there's no, I think I just pass in the month, the day, and the year. So I don't think I need the, the actual format. So you know what? I'll change this to date time instead of date. So 
import date time. And then I'll do that same thing here. So date time. Okay. Yeah. So that works. So import date time, and then I'll convert that to a date. So, um, we can just add that directly into the database. So daytime dot string parse time. I'm gonna take in that date that I have. So date, and I'll pass in the format. So um, month, day, and year. And what I can do is say, uh, what's the name of the model? So log, I need to import that. So import log and we have log dot or not log dot, but we'll have a log and in here we have it as date is the only column that I'm concerned with. So I'll say log equals log and then I can add this. So db dot session dot add log db dot session dot commit. Uh, just like that. Okay, so getting the date, I'm converting it to a date time object, and that should be converted to a date object. We'll see in just a moment. You can exit out of the Python REPL, and it should commit it, and it should uh, redirect me to the to the views page. So let's try that. So I'll go here, and then I'll go to the index. So we'll add a log. We'll try uh, July fourteenth at date and, oh, I have it backwards. So the year is before the month and the date. So um, capital Y dash M. So let's try that again. And July 14th at date, I uh, could not build the endpoint for main.views because it wants main.view. Okay, so it should have added it to the database though. So I'll do one for the 15th, add it, and we see it redirects me to the view page. So that is all working correctly. If I open up the database, so SQLite 3 food tracker db.sqlite3 and select star from the log table, I should have two dates in there. I have one for the 14th and one for the 15th. Okay, so that's all working properly. So next thing I can do is I can pass the actual ID for the log here. So a uh, URL for may not view, and I can say, um, you know, log ID equals log dot ID. So I want to redirect to that. And in the view here, I can update this to be log ID. And then it takes a log ID here. And this will be an integer. Right. So let's try that now. And so view doesn't work anymore. I can't uh, build dot view anymore. So this is good. So in the index uh, where we have view, uh, this needs to have an ID associated with it. So what I'm gonna do later is I'm going to loop over these and create like the boxes for each date. But for now, I'll just say the log ID is one. And I'll do the same thing for all of them. So log ID one, log ID one, log ID one, just like that. And now if I refresh the page, uh, that's working. And if I look at them, they all take me to the first date. Okay. So that's all fine. And on the actual view page, I need to update it with the information for this particular date. So let's start working on this. So if I go over to the routes for view, I need to get that log associated with it. So I can query for that. So let's put that first. So log equals log dot query gets with the log ID, right? And with this, I can do get or 404 for this. I can actually update all these. So let me just do that really quick. So get or 404, get or 404, those are different. Okay, so get her 404, so it just 404 as if the ID doesn't, doesn't exist. And what I can do is I can pass that log to the template. And inside the template, I can use that to get the date 
So uh, inside of you, I can go over to, let's see. So instead of December 14th, and I might have to make this a certain format, but I'll just put or log dot date. Okay. So now let's take a look. Okay. So I have 2020 uh, dash 17 dash 14, and that's really fine, but I'll do this. So string stir parse time. And this is going to be, uh, I think it's B and then D and then year, right? So capital B is for the month, I think. And string, string format time, not string parse time. So let's see. Okay, so July 14th, 2020. Okay, so I put the correct format in there. Next thing I wanna do is I want to be able to add in foods to this and then display them. So to do that, I need to make sure that I can process this form. So like when I click add food, it allows me to post. So in the routes, I'll create a new one called um, add food to log. It's gonna take in a log ID. So log ID and let's just say routes and we'll call this add foods log, log ID here. And then we can get the log just like we're doing here. We're going to redirect to the, um, the view page. So return redirect URL four, and then we're gonna redirect to uh, view using the log ID. So log ID is going to be the log ID that's passed in here. Okay, so now the only thing that needs to be done is I need to actually get that. So request.form.get. We're gonna get the value from that drop down that select. So where was it? So view and oh, I'm looking for the list of options, but I removed them because it's just a for loop now. So that should be up here somewhere. Okay, so the for loop is here. The name is food select. So I'll just copy this name and I'll get that. So I'll call this selected food. And then what I can do is I can query for that particular food. So uh, food equals food query get. And then this selected food should be an ID and it's gonna be an integer or excuse me, a string. I need to convert it to an integer because the values here are the food IDs. And what I can do is I can say uh, log.foods.add, and I can add the food here, and then db session commit. All right, so let's try adding some food to this particular log date. And let's add some ice cream, add food, and we see I need to update the, the method in the form. So let's see, uh, action. So URL four, um, this will be view, and it's gonna take in the ID. So URL for view, and then the, uh, as an extra quote, the log ID is going to be equal to, I should have the log there, yep. So log.id, and then I can put the closing brackets. So now let's try this again. It should have the main before view for the blueprint. So main.view. Okay, so ice cream, add food, method not allowed. So here, this should be for post requests. So methods posts. And now let's try this again. And actually, no, it's not, it's not view. It's this add food to log. That's the endpoint that I'm interested in. Okay, so now let's try adding ice cream, add food, uh, instrumented list object has no attribute add. So um, this should be append, not add, it's not Django. Okay, so let's, let's go here. Ice cream, add food, uh, could not build the view. Okay, so main.view, I keep making that mistake. 
and it should have added it. So I should have added ice cream. So let's try adding steak as well. So steak and ice cream. So it loads the page and I'll open up the database just so we can confirm that it's there. So food tracker, db.sqlites, and I want to select from log underscore food this time. And now I see uh, for ID one, so log ID one, which is the date that I was just working on, it has food item three and food item six associated with it. So if I select star from food, number three is the ice cream and number six is the steak. So that's exactly what I want. So now I can work on building this little table here with the actual foods and I can worry about adding the values. So uh, what I'll do is I will go over to the part where it shows me the foods. So let's see for burger, burger. Okay, so I'll remove one burger and then I'll put the for loop around it. So for something, and I'll think about that once I write this. So the model is foods, so I can look at that and the lazy, uh, we'll just say dynamic for the lazy, right? So not the most performant, but this won't be that many records. So for, um, let's say for food in log.foods. So uh, what I'm looking for is this to appear twice. So let's see, uh, invalid syntax, lazy equals dynamic. And I put a period instead of a comma there. Okay, so that appears twice, so that should be working correctly. If I go over here again and look at this, so uh, we have a number, we have a name, and protein. So I don't think I have an ID in the database for the, um, for the table here, so I'm gonna need to come up with an ID or either remove it. Uh, I'll leave that as one and I'll fix that in a moment. So food.name. And then let's see. So this should change to ice cream and steak. And it does when I refresh. So now I know I can get the other values. So this is food dots um, proteins. And then this is going to be food dot carbs. And then this is going to be food dots fats. And this is going to be food dot calories. Okay, so if I refresh that, everything looks to be working. Um, I need a number, so let's see, Jinja, Python. What I wanna do is I just wanna get uh, a number that will display, and there's something in here that I can use to give me like the index of the loop. I just can't remember what it is. So let me search for index. And let's see. loop.index, so loop, loop.index, yeah, so I can get the index. So if I say uh, loop.index, that should be a special variable. And let's see if that updates it. Yeah, so one and two, okay. So if I add another food item, pancakes, then it sets pancakes as two. It doesn't really matter the order, it just matters the the values are correct and I see three things, ice cream, pancakes, and steak. So now what I can do is I can make sure that these values are you know, working correctly. So I'm going to need to calculate all of them. So what I can do is I can have like a totals dictionary here inside of view. Uh, let's say totals and you know, I'll create that after. So what I'll do is I'll loop over, so for, for food and log, log.foods. Uh, what I want to do is I want to loop over all the foods that I have and just keep a count of the totals, right? So the total protein, so total protein, the total carbs, and the total fat. And like I said, I can make like a totals dictionary. So totals, and we'll have um, the total protein, set it to zero, the total carbs, set that to zero, and the total fat, set that to zero. Finally, the total calories. 
we'll set that to zero. And then inside the loop, I can do something like, you know, totals um, protein, and then the same for the other ones. So uh, this will be calories. This will be fats. And this will be carbs. And then I can just update them with uh, food.proteins. food dot carbs uh, food dot fats and food dot calories okay and then I can pass the totals to the template so totals equals totals just like that and in here I can look for the totals so uh that's the header. So let's start with the proteins. So totals, uh, I think I just used the dot notation. Where's that Django again? I'll just use the square brackets. So protein for the totals. And let's see if that updates. So right now it's 60, refresh 85. So 10 plus 15 plus 70 is 85. So I know the totals for the protein works and uh, because the other ones follow along the same lines, they should work as well. So I'll just update these. So carbs, um, fats, and this will be calories. Okay. So the fat's not working, but the carbs look correct. So 35, the calories look correct as well, but the fat is not appearing. So it should be fat singular instead of fats, I believe. Okay, so 115. So everything is working here. I can add food. Let me add uh, pizza. And we know that works. And like I said, I can't add the same food twice because it will fail. And I'm not going to deal with that particular use case. But if you want to, I encourage you to add a quantity. So you would just add another field for the quantity. But what I want to do is I want to be able to delete a particular food. So uh, what I'll do is I'll go over to... Let's see the routes and I'll say uh, main dot routes, remove food from log and it's going to take in a log ID and it's going to take in a food ID, food ID. And it's going to be a post. So methods post and then remove food from log. Uh, log ID, food ID. Okay. And what I want to do now is I want to just set up the redirect. So return redirect URL for um, main.view, just like above. We're going to return back to the log. So log ID equals log ID. And what I want to do here is I want to query that for, for that particular record. Right. But since I won't get, um, well, I'll show you. So I need to query for the log first. So log equals, um, let's see, log query get log ID. And then I need to get the food as well. So food equals food query get food ID. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the log.foods and I can remove the, the food from it. So remove food and then I can do db.session.commit just like this and I'll just put it here and it will redirect me to the log. So now I need to go back to view and I need to make sure that the buttons are working for the food ID and the log ID or where the delete button has the food ID and the log ID in it. So here we're going to say URL four and it's this route I just created. So I remove food from log and it's going to have a log ID which is going to be log.id. And then it's going to have the food ID, which is going to be a food.id because I'm inside the loop. And that should be it. So let's go back here, refresh. And once again, I forgot the name of the blueprint. So main.removefood from log. 
Okay, so if I hover over these, I see the food IDs. So let me go ahead and delete the ice cream. So method not allowed, which is just fine. So this is actually a um, Git request. So like looking at the other delete that I have, um, let's see, delete food. It's just a Git request, not a post request. I don't have to post anything because I have both the log ID and the food ID here. So that was a mistake. So I'll go back and I'll try to delete ice cream again. And we see ice cream gets deleted. And if I refresh the page, it's still gone. But all the counts for the, the calories have updated. So if I remove pancakes, proteins, for example, should decrease by 5, carbohydrates by 20. I do that. Uh, proteins is down to 110. Carbohydrates are down to 75. And the rest of the values update as well. So let me try adding back pancakes. And I'll add back uh, ice cream just to have something here. And everything works. So it looks like everything is working on this particular page as well. So we have the add page working and we have the, uh, the view detail page. Now what I wanna do is I just wanna get all the records in the database. So I have this thing here where I have four things per row and I'll display them here. So I'll go over to the index. So I think I'm done in views. I'll go over to the index and I'll look for those, those blocks. And I have them here. So let's see, um, we have two things that I wanna loop over. I have the, um, I have a row, right? And that has each one. So what I'll do is I'll just copy this so we can kind of see what it looks like when I have more than one row. And I also have that existing records, which I'll update in a moment. But I just added a second row so now when I refresh this, I have two rows. So this is what it's going to look like. Pretty ugly, but this is fine. So uh, each row is going to have four dates. And then, you know, each date will have the actual values for that date. And I'll, I'll uh, handle that momentarily. But first, I want to display the dates that I have. So um, there are going to be two loops involved. So one for the row and one for the, the columns. So to do that in Jinja, and I forgot this as well. Uh, let's still have it open. Uh, what I want to do is I want to, you know, have some kind of uh, cycle. And I actually created a video on this a couple of weeks ago, and I already forgot how to do it in Flask. You know, I if I if I write the same code in both Flask and Django in like the same period, I always forget the Flask one. I remember the Django one, but not the Flask. Well, typically, I bet if I were making a Django video right now. I'd forget the Django stuff and remember the flask. So, um, you know, what do you call that? I even forgot what you call it. Um, so let's see. Some kind of loop. So escaping, white space control, filters, tests, and maybe it's not in this particular part of the documentation. So let's see. It should be API, right? Is it? No, control. Control structures, for loop. We have items. I think it's a cycle. If, let's see, cycle. No, it's not cycle, but it should be similar to cycle. Um, let's see. Well, let's just use Stack Overflow. So Jinja, loop, rows, and columns. And I want Jinja, Jinja, Jinja. No, that's not a good way of doing it. Nested for loop. These aren't good ways of doing it, maybe because it's old. I can't remember when, when it was added, but um, let's try nested, nested, a nested loop. So nested for loop, that's the same one I saw already. Um, nested for loop. And you know what? I'll just watch my own video. So pretty printed uh, YouTube. 
because I know exactly what I want to do here. And I don't know how I forgot this. So let's see. I added it um, two weeks ago. So a grid. And the wrong button. So let's see. Batch. That's what I want. Batch. <laughs> okay. So um, we're going to batch this by four, right? Because we have four things. So let me... Let me remove the, the second row that I added, and then I can put the in four down here, and then the, uh, the for loop up here. So four, so now what I wanna do is I wanna go to the template, and I can say like log dates equals log dot query dot all, and then I can pass this to the template. So log dates equals log dates, and I'm going to order by the uh, log dot uh, date descending. Okay. So log dates in here. So now I want to loop over the log dates. So for log date in log dates. And then batch this by four. Okay. So now. And then the inner loop will be the actual boxes. So the boxes are going to be these columns here. So I can get rid of all but one. Right, so let's see, where does it end? It ends here. Okay, so we're gonna put another loop. So in four down here, and then there's a loop that goes here. So four, and then what are the things that go into it so if I just skip ahead oh okay so I need this to be the row so four row and then you know four row four uh, log date in row that's exactly what I want okay so I can close this I don't think I need this anymore and um, so for the log date in the row I want to update this information so here, I'm going to have the log date. So log date dot date and then string format time. And it's going to be capital B, D, and then the year. And then just like that. So now let's see if that's working. I don't have to worry about the ID just yet. Okay, so I have two. I have July 15th and July 14th. And then I need to worry about the links. So the link is going to be the log ID. So log date dot uh, ID. And now I see two and one. So if I go to one, I get the one I had before. If I go to this one, I get nothing because I haven't added anything to it yet. I can add a chicken sandwich and it works. Okay. So now before I work on these values, I wanna make sure it appears correctly if I have more than four dates so I'll just add some dates in here um, July say June 30th so I have four here and they're in the right order and I'll do one more I'll go back to last month and I'll add June 19th go home and we see it's on the next row here so the batch thing is working correctly once I remember that it was batch after watching my own video so now I want to make sure I can add in the values for the particular um, things here. So let's see, what would be the best way to do this? So if I go to routes, uh, one thing I can do is I can associate the, um, the totals with the dates. So, you know, looking at this, it would be better if this were, um, if this were a model, so I can add a property in it to do that. So thinking, should I do it that way? I think I can get away with that. Let, let's try it. So we'll call this, uh, we'll call this uh, log, we'll call this log uh, food. And then in here is from db.model. You need to specify the table name. So table name, because I don't want it to be, well, it would be log food anyway. So I think that's fine. 
because it will put an underscore between the the end of the first word and the beginning of the second word. So now I want to have these in here. And actually thinking about it, like I can't update this easily because I need to add an ID here. So you know what? I'll just take a different approach. So one approach is to create a model that represents the association between the food and the log. And then just like I have the property for food, I can have the property for like the total. So I can just query and loop over the foods associated with that date and I can add in all the values. But instead what I'll do is I'll just do that in here. So uh, let's see where would be a good place to do that. So I have the log dates and I want the totals associated for those log dates, right? Uh, so what I can do is one, I can, yeah, I can do that. So I'll create a, the log dates here and I'll call this logs, right? So this log dates will be a list that I'm gonna pass to the template. I may have to update the template a little bit. So what I want to do is I want to say like four log in logs. Um, I'm going to append to this log dates. So log dates dot append, right? And in here I want to append a dictionary. So well, I'll append the actual log date itself. So this should be a string, right? So log, and then I want to append the, the values, right? So, um, you know, I can, I can look at the totals that I have here. Well, it's a pretty easy calculation. So um, what I can do is I can say, it's gonna be, uh, there's gonna be a loop inside of this. So for food in, in uh, log.foods, this is where I'll do the calculations. So um, this will be proteins equals zero, carbs equals zero, fats equals zero, and uh, calories equals zero, right? And I'm gonna update these inside of this loop here. So proteins, is going to be equal to uh, the food dot protein, right? And then the same thing for carbs. So plus equal food dot carbs and fats plus equal food dot fats. And this should be singular. And then the calories, likewise, calories, uh, food dot calories, right? And I'll have those totals. So now I can say proteins, it's going to be proteins. Then we'll have um, carbs be carbs. And we'll have fats be fats. And calories is calories, okay? So now looking at this, um, I have two loops. The outer loop, I'm looping over each log that I have from the database and I'm going to initialize the values to be zero. Then I'm gonna loop over each food in the log. So this is the relationship. And I'm going to update these values with the, you know, just adding the protein, carbs, fat, and calories. And then when I'm done with this loop, so I exit this loop, I'll append these to a dictionary and send them to the template. So now I need to make sure that I can use the log date in here. So I think I only use it in like uh, one place. So let's see index. Okay. So for row and log dates, right? So each row is a dictionary. And then for each, uh, for each dictionary, we're calling it log date. So this should be something like, um, you know, log dates date, and then log date like this, I believe. So let's see if this works. Okay. So food object has no protein. So let's see, where is that? So food dot protein. And I just spelled that wrong. Okay. So let's try that again. And maybe I'm looking in the wrong place. So line 23, um, protein. Oh, it's proteins. I keep messing up if it's singular or plural. Okay. So let's try this again. Okay, so dictionary object has no attribute ID, so that's fine. 
So um, let's see. What line is it on? Line 36. No, that's the uh, render template call. So inside the template itself, it's line 86. So let's see, line 86, which is directly beneath what I was looking at. Okay, yeah, so uh, we're just at the log date, just like this. So now we should be able to get the ID for the particular one. Okay, so now we see um, July 27th. Okay, so the dates are working again. So now I wanna get the actual value. So for most of these, it will be all zero. And let's see, here inside of the, the loop, let's see, where is it? Okay, here are the values, so protein. So this will be a log date and then protein, right? So if this works, then the other one should work and this should be proteins, right? Yeah, proteins and Okay, so 0, 50, 125, 0, 0. Okay, so those are all good. And then um, I'm gonna take this and update it for these ones. So calories, uh, fats, carbs. And now if I go back here, okay, so these are all zeros. These look right. So this is 455 total. And if I add in another food, let's say pancakes, this updates to 690. If I go back to the homepage, it's 690 here. And then it looks like everything is working. So if I go to view, I'll just add a chicken sandwich, a burger here. I'll add pancakes, steak, a burger, and pizza. And then for the last date that I have on here, I'll add pancakes and pizza. So now I have values for all these. They're different because I have different foods. And uh, looking at this, I think the very last thing I need to do, because I can delete from the food thing here, I can delete from this. Yeah, so the very last thing I need to do is I need to get the existing records here, which will be very, very easy. So what I can do is I can say, I can just call count on this. So, um, or the length of it. So. Um, the length of um, log dates, right? And then that should return. If it's not lin, it would be uh, like count in Jinja. I can't remember. Yeah. So it's a filter count instead of lin. So bar count, and it's the same thing as length. So I have zero, so that's not right. So maybe I have to pull up the Jinja documentation one more time. And length, yeah. So instead of count, it's length. Okay, so that's still not working. So logs, that's because it's logs instead of log. Okay, so five. I have five existing records. If I add a new date, let's go back to May. May 2020, and if I can add a date, it's not letting me. Oh, here we go. So May 13th, add it. I'll add some food, pancakes, and steak, and go back. I have six records. It appears down here last because it is the oldest date in the database, and uh, it appears to be working. So it looks like everything in this food tracker is working. Almost took me an hour and 45 minutes to do this, but didn't make too many mistakes other than the whole blueprint thing. But like I said before, if you wanna update this to make it to where you can add quantities, I think that would be a good thing. If you need any hints, just feel free to leave a comment down below and I can try to help you out with that if you get stuck on anything. So I'll leave the code for this in the uh, description below if you wanna get the code and modify it yourself if you want. Uh, but that's it for this video. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you have any questions about what I did here, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.